Hello, Kari and Tamara. I am Courtney Krieger, joined by Dahlia Fisher and Shover Hammer. And together we lead the Malt Museum of Jewish Heritage's flagship program, Stop the Hate, with committee chair Daryl McNair. As you know, Stop the Hate has been around for a long time. This is our 13th year, in fact. And each year, through the generosity of a donor, we give out $100,000 in scholarships and prizes to students and schools. But this year, we wanted to do things a little differently. This year, we also wanted to recognize individual teachers who go above and beyond in their classrooms as anti-bias education advocates. We asked our partners at Lake Erie Inc. and Roots of American Music to nominate an educator who exemplified this ideal during Stop the Hate workshops. While there are many deserving teachers and the choice was very difficult, today we are proud to share some exciting news with you. On behalf of the Maltzes, the Maltz Museum, our partners at Lake Erie Inc. and Roots of American Music and the Stop the Hate Committee, Kari and Tamara, we want to thank you for providing Northeast Ohio students with a platform to stand up and speak out against hate through the Stop the Hate program. In recognition of your efforts at your schools, Kari at Mayfield High School and Tamara at Newton D. Baker School of the Arts, you have been selected as the 2021 Stop the Hate Educators of the Year. Congratulations. Thank you. Yay! <laughs> so, <laughs> Kari and Tamara, we are delighted to share with you that you not only earned a prestigious title, but also a generous award. You will each receive a $1,000 cash prize Ooh. and have marked your spot in Stop the Hate history. So it's been wonderful to work with you and be inspired by you. And we know there are many parents, educators, and mentors who want to hear from you. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to the editor of Northeast Ohio Parent Magazine, Angela Gartner, who's going to ask you a few questions. Angela. <laughs> Hi, congratulations. Um, I, I first just wanna ask you, and I know it's gonna take a minute to absorb all this, but I wanna ask you first, how do you feel about winning today? You want to go first, Kari? Go ahead. <laughs> I, I'm trying to catch my breath. I, um, I'm really overwhelmed. I, I have always tried to lead with my heart as an educator, as a human being, and to be just recognized by your organization as a person who's exemplifying that um, was never a requirement in my life, but it just feels so amazing. Thank you so much. I, I think that education is beyond just, you know, um, you know, all of the things that we're required to do. Education really requires us to look outside ourselves, see our world as a bigger place. Uh, notice that there's places for everyone here to be inclusive, to be loved, to be respected. Um, and our stories matter. Um, as an English teacher and a creative writing teacher, stories and narratives can get us that way and get us to that place of understanding one another a little bit more so that we can celebrate all that we have accomplished and all that our journey kind of shows. And then to show that we can, in a grassroots effort, make it the world we want to create. And thank you, Maltz Museum, for allowing us to um, have the opportunity to work with you because you are amazing. Lake Erie Inc. was amazing as well to help with the crafting of all of that. And um, thank you. <laughs> I'm really honored. Thank you so much. I guess it's me. <laughs> I forgot the question. Um, I'm just very, I'm honored also. Uh, I've been doing this out of the probably 13 years. We've been doing it 12 here at Newton D. Baker. And uh, we're always very excited um, when we win something. I always am so excited that the kids get that recognition because they work so hard and they're such a wonderful group year after year after year. We have these great kids come through our school that are so talented and they have such heart. And um, when they win, I feel like we win. You know, I win when they win. And um, to be recognized for all that work, it's, it's an honor and uh, it, it humbles me um, because that's not why I do it. I do it because I want them to have that experience. And I really appreciate all the organizations and Roots of American Music um, and all their artists that work with our kids and they share their unique perspective with the kids and they get to know these 
wonderful musicians and they get to see them create on the fly. And um, it's very inspirational for them and for me. And I really appreciate the malt giving us that opportunity every year. Thank you. <laughs> well, tell us why this education is important. Why is anti-bias education important to teach? And why is it important to you to teach your students this and be involved with this program? Well, I think uh, the reason I am so involved with it is my students, I have a very mixed group. We're very diverse here at Newton D. Baker. But when we go places and we do things, um, you know, I watch them and I want people, I want people who aren't around diverse kids to see, you know, they're just like everybody else. They're great kids. And um, I feel like our world is shrinking with the way that we're dividing and um, into these groups. Uh, I don't want it to be that way. I want it to be everybody is American, everybody is, is part of everything. And I, it just makes us as a country um, smaller in some way when we are not embracing the diversity that we have in America, because that's what America is about. We are a diverse nation. We have always been diverse. From day one, we've been diverse. So for us to not acknowledge that and embrace it for what the wonderful thing that it is, is wrong. And I feel like through this Stop the Hate program, I can teach about that diversity. My kids can understand how important that is and their place in keeping it going and, and changing the world. Um, because I, I think that's really important that they realize, even though they're in seventh, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, that they have a responsibility. I'm always telling them, it's your turn. You've got to step up and change the world. It's your turn. You, you've got to do it. And um, they embrace that. And I think they will. I'm very proud of them. They're, they're very um, open-minded and accepting of each other. So I think this kind, of, um, this kind of backing and this kind of support from a place like the Malt Museum and all their organizations really um, gives my they give, it gives my kids a head start so that they can when they get into high school and into college and they look out that they can have a foundation uh, under their feet so they know what's going on and they can embrace and start to change the world because it's you know it's their turn. <laughs> Same question to you. <laughs> um, in our classes, we always teach that art is a you know the humanities. Um, the reflection of human nature is, you know, either, an, you know, history can be this, this um, mirror or this um, lamp that we carry through our lives. And as we learn more that's happening in our world, um, we need to come and have a seat at the table. And so the idea of walking in and having the opportunity to not only embrace what our curriculum naturally embraces, but then having the helping hand of the Maltz Museum um, and um, the Roots of American Music and Lake Erie Inc. allows us to really um, bring that to life, to show that it matters in a community, that it's not just some sort of, you know, vacuum that we're writing to, that your stories matter, your experience matters. And when you believe that, and when you believe you have a seat at the table, then you believe that things can change. And as a result of that, I've been doing uh, the, the essay for a number of years, but there was this added component this year too, of just seeing your interaction with them, reminding them that you are spiriting the same charge that they have, you as people of the community, you are, you know, leading this way and offering this light that they so desperately want. We all want to be included. We all want to be valued. We all want to find our place and our footing. And I think you guys are doing amazing things that allow educators to really harness that spirit and that energy and that camaraderie and that love. And we're so grateful for that. And thankfully, just like Tamara was mentioning, our school, our school, all schools need that. All, all conversations need that. And I believe we're, we're part of that vehicle to start the conversation. I always tell kids, you're responsible like Tamara to like be part of the conversation. You have to start the discourse. If we don't talk to one another, then things will you know, we'll stay the same. We need to take risks. We need to share our, our truth. And we need to know that other people's truth needs to be valued just as much as ours. And so 
Yeah. Teenagers are amazing. They, they know what they want to say. It's kind of like lightning in a bottle. Sometimes you got to harness it, but they are, they are, they're ready and they just need the outlet. And so thank you. Well, can you share a little bit about um, what, how the students responded to this? Because we, you know, as teachers, I mean, you've had a lot of challenges this year. So um, not just with, I mean, specifically, you know, with what's kind of going on in the world, you, a lot of people had to go virtual. So, you know, share how your students really kind of responded to this and, you know, what you want to say to, you know, parents like me who, you know, want to, you know, continue this education with our, our kids. I think as a parent, I would want to know that students are ready and willing to have conversations like this. And, um, there's a there's a careful way to um, the wonderful thing about the multi museum and the um, Lake Erie Inc. Um, instructors in in concert with their uh, assigned instructor was that uh, it's very well prepared. It's rooted in history. We're looking at artifacts and documents that you know really reflect what has truly happened, so that we can be informed and then we can make our decisions. It it brings us back to truth. It brings us back to what really, really is happening or what has happened. And it asks us to sit there with a moment. So I think as a parent, I'm constantly trying to model these things in my household. Um, and so it, it seems like it is a natural conversation that students want to have. I think being in the pandemic has ignited more um, division, like Tamara said, it has ignited um, more oppressed groups to see their oppression and suppression and ask questions. And although we don't have necessarily always the answers, like I said, as a parent, we have to step into this to guide in a way, um, not tell what to do, but guide in a way that would be informative, um, loving, respectful, and rooted in, in truth. So um, I think as a parent, sometimes we worry, how do we do that? Um, I think the Maltz Museum has created a wonderful curriculum for us to do that. Even some of my colleagues who I've been doing this for a number of years were like, I don't know if I have the equipment, you know, the, 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 the equipment to do this, like, you know, or the conversation skills. Um, they were, they were, we were in conversation in concert with other people. We were a communion of people. And that's also what's cool as a parent uh, to know is that um, good things are happening at schools. Kids are resilient. Kids are knowing, they know what's going on. They want to talk about it. Um, and we just need to listen and guide and just hold space for them. Um, not necessarily carve out the path for every single person, because that's an individual choice, but allow space for the work to happen. Um, and it's, it's miraculous. It's really wonderful. So as a parent, like if my kids were doing this in their school, oh my gosh, I would, you know, I, I hope that I can kind of tell my school or my children's school district, hey, you got to get on this, you know, <laughs> for next year, because I think it teaches all the best things we want in our world. Um, tolerance, love, respect, openness, inclusiveness, and conversation, the ways to have skills to talk to one another. Um, so I hope I answered your question. <laughs> I can't remember the question. Um, I, as a parent, my daughter um, is 23 and she did not have this experience at school, although they did start, it's, she went to the Midview schools and now they're embracing the whole um, Stop the Hate program. She was a little you know, uh, angry that uh, she didn't get to be involved because she had graduated already. But um, as a teacher, I think it's important that we relay what we're doing to the parents so they can understand um, what's going on at school. And with, um, I don't work with the essay program as much as the songwriting program. And with um, the artists that come in, you know, and they guide the kids to what they're thinking about and what they want to write their song about. And they're so good at um, sharing different viewpoints without sharing their viewpoint. And I think that it's really important that we allow children to come to their own conclusions and guide them. And I think that is good what Carrie said, the Maltz Museum has a program set up that when they go through the program or they go through the museum, they 
they have so many questions and um, and they bring it up later. Um, we, we can be in my history classes and they'll they'll bring stuff up that they saw or talk about and, and they just don't, and a lot of times they just don't understand it. They really don't understand the bias and the prejudice and, and all of it. They're just like, what, why? So that's a, a hard question to answer. And as parents, I think it's our respons responsibility to try to tackle that. Although it's, it's a very difficult conversation because most kids that I have dealt with in all the years I've been teaching, all 34 years, they, will, they don't understand that. They, they come and they like everyone and everyone is great, you know, especially the little ones. And once they get older and, um, and different things are happening and there's bullying and things like that, they still, when they look out into the world, they don't understand, you know, some of that, those things. And some of the things that happen to them, some things have happened to my students through the years that they've talked to me about and they, they don't understand why someone would say that to them or treat them that way. And, um, and it really hurts them. So I think um, it's our responsibility as parents to create children and to raise children that don't treat others that way, that can stand up and say no, that they're not bystanders, that they're upstanders. And they stand up and they point it out and they say something. And I think that through this pandemic, a lot of people who have been, who are oppressed have decided they're not going to take it anymore. And a lot of people who aren't have, have stood right next to him. That generation in their early 20s, their late teens and early 20s, they're standing fast together against all of this. And it's, it makes you proud to be a teacher. It makes you, it's like, okay, these kids are coming through my class and they're standing up for this. And that, that makes you proud. And as a parent, I would hope that all of us wouldn't want that, our child to be that person, to be standing up with with kids who are oppressed or if you're in, in a group that's being treated wrongly that you know that you're standing up it it makes me very proud of that generation and to be part of the teaching that they came through my classroom at one time you know so it's it's uh it's sad to watch that they have to do that but it's also exciting and, and a very proud moment as a teacher to see them do that and to come into that in uh, and, and they're able, you know, to stand firm in their beliefs in, in, in the face of all of this that's going on in our world. It makes me proud as a teacher. It would make me really proud as a parent if my child was doing that too. And, and my final question is, now you you both have been in, involved in this for years. What impact have you seen after you have participated in this program, have you seen that impact in your classrooms and those changes in behaviors in the classroom? I have, you know, I'm waiting for her to go. Um, I have seen changes, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, like I said earlier, our school is pretty diverse and um, they're pretty open with each other. They kind of let people be people, which is not what you usually encounter in a middle school at all. Um, so I've always kind of admired the culture at this school because they are kind of, you know, just leave them alone, let them be who they are. They don't, I don't, we don't, there is some bullying everywhere. You can't, you know, you can't get away from it. But um, I do see it. And one of the things I see too, is it opens my students' minds. It opens up their whole world. Like, oh my gosh, this is, this happened. And this is happening to these people. And why is it happening? And then we go on our, like we take the kids to Washington um, and then on the off every other year. And then one year we'll the off year, we'll take them like to Cincinnati to the underground railroad museum. And um, when we go to Washington, we always go to the Holocaust museum and the African American museum and they get to see, you know, they kind of put what they've learned through the Malt Museum and, and the tours and they get to see it on a bigger scale and it kind of opens their world because a lot of times when you're in middle school, your world is your school, your class, your, your friends, and that's all you think about. You don't really, you know, you don't look out. You just, you just look for your little group of friends and we were all that way. But I found with going through this program, my kids have a better worldview, they're more global and they know what's going on in the world which is, you know, as a teacher, especially a history teacher, that, you know, is a big goal of mine 
to make sure that they're not just looking inward here in Cleveland at the school, but they're seeing what's going on everywhere and, and uh, have opinion and know what's, what's going on. And um, I guess I'll piggyback on that. I, being an English teacher, I have a lot of platforms and a creative writing teacher. I have had the experience of doing the essays with both of the classes, um, which can fit in more conversations about our curriculum, where we say, you know, artists are always trying to tell us messages about the past so that we can improve the future. And if we can be agents of change in that way, artists that are constantly cultivating either art that asks us to question, like Tamara said, or ask us to act, like John Lewis's quote says, you know, like we can't stay in a static state. We can't pretend that we can't hear things. And, um, and that is a maturity level that comes with that. And so with my ninth graders, I do see them questioning. I also see them having a platform for expression that doesn't necessarily always fit into that you know, scholarly formula where it's like has to meet these standards where now it's like, listen, tell me your story. Tell me how it made you feel. And also tell me how it made you act, how, how it actually, you know, made you viscerally change or cognitively, you know, change in a way that that's the spirit of this um, contest and the spirit of this movement, really. I, you guys have really started a movement, I think, you know, like you're championing other voices before you, but you are continuing that movement. And with my creative writers, who adore writing and who adore expression and, and can craft things. And I have songwriters and I have artists and I have, you know, people who just, you know, meticulously pick the word that has to be exactly right. Um, they know that they have a craft that they can get to an audience. I think with the, this was our first time doing the singer songwriter uh, you sing out, which was fantastic. I have to say, Ta Tamara was saying too, like just the spontaneity and the vulnerability of the, of the singer songwriter artists were, you know, kind of, you know, telling us what they were doing and what they were thinking and inviting. And it was just like, almost like this jam session. That's kind of also like, things like this are messy. Like sometimes it's hard to step in because you're like afraid that, well, I'm a teenager. Can I, can I wrangle this? Can I do something with this? And, and I think the malts allows you to say thing you're, you're, <laughs> I have this quote in my room. It says your messy little story matters. Like, and it is like, things aren't you know, linear, things are always in conversation. Like when, you know, Tamara was saying some of those light bulbs go off when you're in different moments of your life, this, this does inspire change. Kids want to get across messages that they find are, are important and they need ways to show them how to do that. And I think the essay was one way, but the singer songwriter, who doesn't love music? Like when my daughter heard I, our songs that we came up with, do you know what she said? She's like, these could be on TikTok. Like that was like the ultimate, you know, in compliments. I'm like, oh, you really think so? You know, like, so she's confirming that, you know, you know, teenagers want to listen to not only good music, but they want to listen to music whose lyrics motivate them to think and change and ponder and hopefully lead with love, you know, lead with um, kindness and lead with inclusion, which um, I'm just, I'm just so happy that we had all these experiences, <laughs> you know, um, and and the kids, the kids I know were changed by this in the moments that it was happening and all of those little sparks that you lit with them. And um, they're going to carry with them like little torches to kind of be the light as they kind of move on, you know, whatever they do. Yeah, yeah, I'll send it back to you. Thank you, Angela. Thank you for leading this conversation and for sharing um, Kari and Tamara's voices with the Northeast Ohio Parent Magazine community were incredibly grateful. Um, we wanted to remind both of you um, that because you were participants in the workshop um, and that the way that the changes operated this year was that any school that participated in one of the Stop the Hate workshops, either essay writing or songwriting, would be included in um, a prize that was an unknown amount because we had a $30,000 pot of money to be shared among schools that were participants. And the way that 
um, it broke down was to um, about 30 schools. So um, each of your schools will also receive a grant in the amount of $1,000 to be used toward anti-bias education in the year ahead. Um, so to continue forward your work in deeper, more meaningful ways. And we can't wait to see what you both will do next, both personally and professionally, and of course your students as well. Um, at 3.30 p.m. today, the big reveal of um, <laughs> essay contest um, finalists, the winners will be announced from the group of 20 top 20 finalists in sixth through 12th grade, as well as all the um, winners for the songs, where it means that more grants will go to more schools, more kids will receive more prizes towards their college education funds. Um, and we're incredibly grateful for all you do. And we just want to say thank you. Um, and keep it up. We're so grateful to work with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs>